Okay, so we're going to be looking at our next part of this um, this PowerPoint, which is knowing your car. We're going to be looking at dashboarding icons, and I'm going to try and change that glare a little bit. Let me come a little bit closer, but it doesn't look like I quite can. Anyways, the next one we're going to look at is the low oil level light. It's going to tell us if we have a low oil level. Um, so this is not pressure. This is engine oil level. So you can see we've got this uh, amber icon on the screen, and it is that oil kettle again, like the oil pressure light. If I go back one slide, you'll see it here. Like the oil pressure icon for oil pressure, except now it's amber because it's not telling us oil pressure. It's actually telling us oil level. Many new cars have this now. Let's keep going. So obviously it's a non-critical malfunction because you can be a little bit low. Um, I'm always going to tell you to have the oil 100% full, but it is a non-critical malfunction in that um, you could be a little bit low and then just have to fill it up. So let's keep going here. Um, so next one we have is the door jar light. And Again, this tells us that the door is uh, not fully closed. I'm going to pause this and see if I can get rid of that glare. Give me one second. Okay, so we're going to be going ahead and looking at the door ajar light, uh, which tells us that our door is not fully closed. And so that's going to be either this one or this one. This one's just going to have the words door ajar. This one's going to have a picture of a car with a door that's obviously open. Both are in red. We consider that a critical malfunction. We don't want to lose your little brother or sister on the road. Next, we've got a seatbelt light, which is red. It's right here. Someone's in a seat without a seatbelt buckled. Okay, so it is going to be a red critical malfunction. Um, next, we have the battery light, which is a red icon. I know this looks kind of tan or orange. It's actually supposed to be red. And um, so this is a red critical malfunction uh, indicator to tell you that the alternator is not charging. So like it says there on the screen, uh, the vehicle is not being charged. Um, and that means that something's wrong with the charging system. It is not a battery problem. We need to test and repair the charging system immediately. And this is a charging system problem. This is not a battery problem. So we're not... Um, going to go out and buy a new battery when we see this, this is a charging system problem. Again, it's a critical malfunction. If it um, happens to uh, go off, if there, excuse me, if that comes on and you've got, um, you're driving from Santa Barbara, an average battery with a normal load, meaning the stair is not kicking real hard, you might be able to drive an hour and a half before the car completely dies because the battery is drained. Okay, so that's the battery light. Next we have what we call a check gauges light, which is a red um, critical malfunction um, light. It indicates that some gauge on the dash needs to be looked at because of its because it's out of range. So some cars, instead of having oil pressure icon, will have an oil pressure gauge, or instead of a um, cooling a temperature icon, it'll have a temperature gauge. If any of those gauges go out of range, it'll turn this red check gauges sign on and it's pretty funny they do spell it here g-a-g-e-s on this car and it is supposed to be g-a-u-g-e-s um not every car has a check gauges light but typically we hope we have one if we've got a car that has a um has gauges okay so next we're going to look at the check engine light so the check engine light or malfunction indicator lamp is a the first of our amber lights which it uh, well other than the low oil level indicator but this um amber light is um uh gonna tell us that there's a problem with the engine that's related to emissions so it's really important that you realize it shows a picture of an engine it is amber so it's a non-critical malfunction it's a um it's a, something that needs to be looked at at your earliest convenience, but you can keep driving the car. Um, so it indicates you have an emissions failure that needs to be checked out at your earliest convenience, okay? An emissions failure that needs to be checked out at your earliest convenience. So um, uh, most people think that this check engine light means, oh, there's something's wrong with the engine, I can't drive. Well, it could be something related to the engine 
but it's something related to the engine that causes the vehicle to produce uh, pollution. So it is what's known as the malfunction indicator lamp or MIL. Um, most people call it a check engine light. Older cars had this service engine soon um, words in, in uh, usually in yellow. And by the way, my flash oftentimes changes the color of these uh, warning icons when you see them up there. But a car will not pass smog if this check engine light is on. It means you have some sort of a failure uh, related to um, emissions. And now some of you are going to say, Mr. L, but that's not right. No, it is right. I promise you it is. It's a, an emissions light. So what I would like to do is see if I can take my camera. I don't know if I can get my camera over there. I'm going to try. I'm going to take the camera over here and show you how the check engine light works. Okay. So if I walk all the way over here to this Ford engine that I have, and what you're going to see is up on the front here, and I think I can get it. Hopefully I'm, you're able to see this. This is um, the front of this Ford Duratec four-cylinder. It's a, um, I believe it's a 2.5 liter four-cylinder. I may be wrong on that. But in any case, this is called a crankshaft position sensor. There's a toothed wheel here um, that every time one of these teeth passes the sensor, it makes a little, about a volt and a half to two volt AC voltage signal to the computer. So the computer sees the rate at which these prongs are passing this guy. And you'll notice that up here, it's got one spot where there is no tooth. Well, that enables the computer to know the position of the crankshaft as it spins and how quickly these are passing tells us the rate. How it knows to turn on the check engine light, let's say if you have what's called a misfire, is it's, um, and that's one thing that will cause an emissions failure. It will, a cylinder, um, if you have four cylinders, they're supposed to fire in a certain sequence. If one doesn't fire, the crankshaft actually decelerates. This crankshaft position sensor sees a change in the speed of this, ro the rotational speed of this crankshaft and turns on the check engine light after it sees it a couple of times. It knows which cylinder because it knows that there's where the gap is on that toothed wheel. But um, something else about the check engine light as I move back over here, and that is that the check engine light um, will also flash if there's a problem, and I'm going to put this back up here, and hopefully it'll get you set back up. There we go. Um, check engine light will flash um, in the case where you have, um, let me turn this guy over here a little bit. And um, a check engine light will flash in the case where Okay, there we go. Um, it will flash in the case where you've got a misfire that's happening every time. So it says if this light is flashing, the catalytic converter damage will likely occur, or catalytic converter damage will likely incur. That's an emission control device in the exhaust that's converting um, oxides of nitrogen to nitrogen and oxygen and converting hydrocarbons to H2O and CO2 and converting CO to CO2. Um, if this light's flashing, that means that that crankshaft position sensor is seeing every time a certain cylinder's teeth go past that sensor, the crankshaft decelerates, and so it knows that cylinder's not firing, and so it's going to flash this light so that we don't damage your catalytic converter. Let's keep going here. So our next dash warning icon is an ABS light, okay? An ABS light. So an ABS light is an amber light um, that stands for anti-lock brake control system. And if that light is on, which um, in this case is down here, the ABS right here, anti-lock brake system, um, if that light is on, that means that the anti-lock brakes have, a, have some trouble. It is an amber light because your brakes will still work. It's just you have no ABS function. Let me briefly give you an explanation of what ABS is for. Anti-lock brakes are made so that when you hit the brake pedal, instead of being able to lock up the brakes, which would cause the car to slide, which means you wouldn't have steering control anymore, we're going to bring the, when you press on the brake, the brakes are going to come to the point of lockup, and the ABS control module is going to release brake pressure so that the wheel comes right to the point of locking and then releases and then lock, 
and the really lock release lock release lock release so the whole point of abs believe it or not is to maintain steering control so you don't lock the tires slide and now you can't control the tire steering unless you're a train drifter or something like that so if that lights on there's an abs malfunction we need to get checked out at our earliest convenience it's a non-critical malfunction next is the maintenance required light or maintenance service light it's an amber light it's just telling you that regular service is needed, and this is just a mileage counter, and it usually goes off on most cars every 5,000 miles, some more uh, or less frequently. Here's a Honda, and it's got a little screen that says oil life percentage, okay? And that's strictly based on, um, well, it's based on a few things. There's an algorithm in, the, algorithm in the computer that looks out at number of cold starts, distance drive between starts, et cetera. And it'll tell you what percentage of your oil life is um, left. In my humble but correct opinion, I do not recommend going by this. I recommend changing the oil every three, oil and filter every 3,000 miles or three months, whichever comes first, if you want the engine to last. Um, the Bureau of Automotive Repair in California, um, BAR, they call it, Bureau of Automotive Repair, requires that shops tell uh, customers that the manufacturer recommends changing oil at 5,000 or 7,500. They can sell you on a 3,000 mile oil and filter change, but they've got to inform you that the manufacturer's recommendation is uh, different than that. But I'm going to tell you, change it at oil, your oil and filter at 3,000 miles, and it'll make the engine last a lot longer. Let's keep going here. Um, so next is a fuel cap loose or off, which is an amber light. Here's one right here. Um, this is just going to tell you that you got gas and you left the fuel cap off or you left it loose because if you don't tighten this um, after a couple of restarts, your check engine light will come on. You think you've got an emissions failure. You take it to a technician. They want to charge you $95 to plug a scan tool and tell you that you left your fuel cap off at the gas station or you left it loose. So some car manufacturers have this light. Ford's gotten around this by getting rid of the cap and having a spring-loaded trap door so you, so there's no cap to lose. They've had troubles with that system. I don't know on brand new Fords if they're still using it. Okay, that's a fuel cap, loose or off, amber light. Next, we'll go to, um, if I can get my thing to advance, a lamp out, amber light, a lamp out, amber light. I don't have a picture of it on the screen, but usually it looks like a little light bulb and it's yellow. And sometimes it'll show you a picture of the car and show you where it's out. Just try and tell you you have a light bulb that's out. The exterior bulb is not working. And that's important because you don't want to get a fix-it ticket and uh, have to pay the $25 that it is oftentimes to fix uh, that. So let's keep going here. Trying to. Come on. There we go. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is a TPMS light. TPMS is an amber non-critical malfunction light that stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System. It's going to tell us if a tire, including the spare, is low on air. I'm going to pause for just a moment. So the TPMS light's going to come on when you have a tire that's 25% less than the uh, recommended tire uh, listed on the sidewall of the tire. Um, okay, so next we're going to talk about, um, uh, by the way, this started in 2008. It's a federally mandated thing, and it's so that you have um, good gas mileage. If the tire is underinflated, you will have um, more rolling resistance. Your gas mileage isn't as good. Your traction may be a little bit better, but not. But your gas mileage isn't as good. If, a, if tire pressure is uneven side to side, it'll pull to the side with the lower tire pressure. Okay, so next let's talk about, um, and by the way, sorry, one other thing. Here's the tire pressure warning uh, monitor system icon. It looks like a cross-section of a tire with an exclamation point. It's trying to tell you that the pressure in that tire is not uh, where it should be. Next is, um, is our traction control light. So here's our traction control. It looks like a car that's skidding. Um, the traction control light's an amber, non-critical malfunction. It tells you if the traction control is on or off or if there's a fault. So you can actually select and deselect. You see in this little picture inset on many cars. Um, and that's because it can be pretty hard to drive a car when you're in sand or um, ice with the traction control on. So the traction control basically works kind of with the AVS, but it works 
Um, opposite ABS releases wheel brake pressure when a wheel locks up. Traction control will apply the brake to get the tire to slow down when it's slipping to try and grab the pavement. So if this light is on and you have not deselected it, it's on because there's a malfunction with the traction control system. Next is an airbag light. This is the airbag amber non-critical malfunction uh, warning indicator. Um, it's uh, an airbag system is called an SRS or supplemental restraint system, meaning it's a restraint system that's additional to the seatbelts. Um, air tells us that the airbag system is inoperative. Um, the car will still function, but the airbags won't deploy if that yellow um, airbag indicator icon is on. I have a really cool YouTube video on how an airbag works that um, I will try and link in on Google Classroom with this PowerPoint. So we'll, we'll um, see about doing that. Let's keep going here. So next is um, a high beam indicator. This is a blue one. So now we're stepping away from red and yellow for just a second. This is a blue indicator on your dash. It just tells you you've got your high beams on. Um, when you click them off, that goes off. And it's just trying to tell you, hey, don't blind the people who are coming at you, okay? Next is a low coolant level light and it is back to an amber light it'll show a jug with some liquid and it's in yellow it's trying to tell you that the coolant level is low um, that's an amber non-critical malfunction warning lamp if it gets really low the engine's going to overheat it's going to turn on that red uh, temperature light or make your temp gauge go up so this is a low coolant level indicator um, on uh, that is on your dash okay let's keep going here Passenger airbag light. So here's a passenger airbag light. It'll just say on the dash airbag off. And what this is for, it's just telling you if you've got the passenger airbag um, turned on or off. And the reason why we can turn it off is because it's very dangerous for a child to be sitting in the passenger front seat with the airbag on. Um, we usually like to have child seats facing backwards. And if you put them in a front seat and they're facing backwards, they're too close, the airbag will hit it and hurt the child. So in that case, we would turn the, the car seat facing forward and we would turn the airbag off for safety. But it's always best to have a child in the back seat turned around uh, facing backwards, okay? So that's what that passenger airbag light's for. Um, next is a theft light. A theft light is a, believe it or not, is a red light. It looks like it's yellow because of my flash. This tells us that the theft system is armed or on. Sorry, I'm pointing to the wrench and I should be pointing to the car with the padlock. That's the theft light. It is a red um, light, so this one is yellow. Sorry, I was mistaken there. This is the um, theft system is armed or, um, uh, or on. And if it's flashing fast, usually it means you've tripped the theft system. If it's passing, flashing to slow, it just means it's armed, etc. Next is the wrench, amber wrench light. It is amber, and it comes on. This is on Honda and some GM cars, but mostly Honda. And all it's trying to tell you is that some repair is needed, okay? Some repair is needed. Um, and it could be just that you need an oil change and the maintenance required light is on. The wrench light will come on. I've noticed newer cars are getting away from this one. I haven't seen it on newer cars, or really new cars, I should say. Daytime running lights, DRL, is a green light on GM and some other cars just telling you that your daytime running lights are on. Those are front headlamps that are on during the day to give you greater visibility in rain or in fog or just if it's a little bit early in the morning. So that's just telling you that green indicator is just trying to tell you that they are actually on. Um, next is cruise control. We're just about done here. Cruise control is a green icon. Sometimes you'll have the words cruise control over on the side of the dash. Usually when you set it, you'll have this little gauge and with an arrow, it's just trying to say, hey, we spent, set the speedometer to that speed. Here's our cruise control. So this one, we turn on by pushing this button in. We turn it off by pushing the button in. So if we turn it on and click this down once to set, that will keep the car at that speed. So if you're going 60 miles an hour and you push the button and then flip this down and it'll spring load back up, it'll hold you at 60 miles an hour. If I then push this down and hold it, the car will coast and it will resume at the spot, uh, the speed when I, that the car is at when I release that. If I push and hold this up, it'll accelerate. ACC is for accelerate. Okay, that's cruise control. Makes it really nice so you don't have to hold your foot 
um, on the the uh, gas all the time. Okay, so um, never use cruise control when you've got cars that are really really close to you um, because it takes time for you to lift your foot off the floor and hit the brake pedal. And during that time at 70 miles an hour, the cars travel a long distance. Usually it takes us about four tenths of a second. And we've traveled a lot of distance in that amount of time. So when there's a lot of cars around, we shut the cruise control off and keep our foot on the gas pedal. Because the moment you lift your foot off the gas pedal, the vehicle starts decelerating. You still need that four tenths of a second to get over the brake, but you're already decelerating as opposed to when the cruise control's on, you lift your foot off the floor and you go to the brake pedal it's still going at the same speed until you hit the brake pedal and it turns off the cruise control. Okay, so that's all that we got for dash warning icons. And um, so make sure you write your three, uh, well, actually what I'd like you to do is, um, uh, I'll go ahead and put on Google Classroom and let you know, thanks.